Hey, it's Alicia from mobilitymastery.com. And today I want to talk to you about what to do if your fascia release efforts feel either way too painful or they're not working. So what I mean by not working is you might be working on an injury that you're trying to heal or recover from. Maybe you're working on optimization and you're not actually getting where you think you should go based on the progressions I have told you about on this channel. Uh, but for whatever reason, the results you're seeking aren't manifesting. Um, so first I'm going to talk about what to do if fascia release is too painful for you. Uh, because it's a common question or an email that I get from a lot of you or comments here on YouTube like, ah, like, I, you know, like this looks really great, this technique you have, but it's, I can't even like put my weight on it. It's too much for me. Um, this is not uncommon. So first of all, I just want you to know that you're not defective. It's normal. Uh, fascia release can feel painful or intense. I prefer the word intense rather than painful, but I just decided to use the word a lot of you have been using, which is like, it's too painful for me to even do. What should I do? Um, so if it's too painful, uh, there are ways you can approach your body and cultivate capacity. And I'm going to talk about that, but first you, you want to rule out uh, a lymph toxicity issue. So even though that's the last on my list, uh, here, you know, talking about what to do if it's too painful. Um, it's actually the first thing you're going to want to rule out, uh, because if you have a, um, a toxicity, a systemic toxicity or lymph congestion issue, um, I can tell you from personal experience, having gone, uh, from somebody who, uh, had really healthy fascia, loved the way it felt. Like I love the way fascia release feels usually. Um, it's never felt too painful for me. Uh, it feels good. I actually like it. Um, you know, a little bit weird. I would say about 25% of people or less like it. The rest don't think that it's pleasant. Um, but I went from someone who, uh, enjoyed it to it being almost intolerable when I experienced mercury poisoning and then some detox symptoms as it was moving through my lymph system and moving out of my body. So if you have lymph congestion, uh, then you could experience getting on a foam roller and it being really, really, really painful. So how do you know if it's that? Well, it's been my experience that lymph congestion in the superficial fascia. So first of all, I should probably clarify for you real quick that, um, your lymph system actually lives within your superficial fascia. So that means the fascia that is um, closest to your skin. So when I'm grabbing my arm right now, I'm actually grabbing, um, the lymph fluid and everything in it. Uh, and what's under there is the deep fascia in the musculature. So anything that you can grab that's on top of the muscle, um, whether it's your arm or another area of your body, uh, is going to be that lymph superficial fascia, um, part of your body. And if when you put your weight on a foam roller or a lacrosse ball or any other mobility tool. And it's like, Oh, like you can hardly put any weight on it. Like as soon as you make contact, it feels tender and sore and just like, um, like really, really painful to the touch. Uh, but tender and sore are like the key words for me that indicate a, a potential lymph or toxicity issue here. Um, if it feels that way through a lot of your body, then I would definitely suspect a toxicity issue. Uh, another way of maybe looking at this to rule it in or out is, um, do you, you know, how many of your household products are organic or non-toxic? And I'm talking everything from the dish soap that you use to your hand soap, to your shampoo, to your laundry detergent, how much of your household uh, is non-toxic versus toxic. Because if you just, if you, you know, take a look around your home and your life, if you can identify toxicity there and you have this really sore, tender, painful, you know, superficial fascia and lymph, then chances are really high. It's a toxicity issue. If you're somebody who maybe, you know, like me tries to live more naturally and more organically in the home and you still have this, then I would assume something more environmental. Uh, so for me, it was mercury toxicity 
airborne mercury toxicity um, in my case, but you could have toxicity show up in numerous ways, everything from mold to the food you're eating, um, antibiotics and pesticides, etc. to maybe you live near a golf course where they spray pesticides really prolifically, right? So it can be a little overwhelming to start looking at that, but I want you to rule this thing out first, this lymph toxicity issue, uh, before you try to do all these other things, because this really might not apply to you if this is your issue. So you want to rule that out first because you're not even going to know how your normal fascia feels to you upon compression and movement. You know, that, that compression and sharing that we're always trying to do here at Mobility Mastery until you can get through that superficial layer. Um, so, so that has to happen first if that's you. So um, I have additional videos on this channel that talk about uh, lymph and superficial fascia and how to use lymph drainage and lymph massage and fascia release for you know moving lymph out of your body. So that's not the purpose of this video. Uh, but if that's you, I would search my channel for that and maybe we can link one of those videos under this one for you um, as well. So you'll wanna rule that out first. <laughs> I hope I was clear on that. If you've ruled that out and fascia release itself in the deep fascia, the musculature is painful to you, like too painful to um, go through the movements that, you know, I or maybe in, someone else is showing you how to do on a foam roller or a lacrosse ball. Um, these are the things you're going to want to try. Uh, it indicates to me that there's minimal capacity here and no judgment from me. This is like, I want to look at this objectively with you, but it does indicate to me that there's a minimal capacity to be with uncomfortable sensations and perhaps even emotions. Um, so you would want to cultivate that capacity. Uh, how do you cultivate that capacity? Well, the first thing you're going to want to do is just get on the foam roller or a ball with zero intention to release fascia. Your only objective right now, if this describes you, is to feel what you feel. That's it. And then cultivate, cultivate the capacity to be with what you feel, to not run away from it, numb, distract, distract yourself, avoid it. So if you find yourself going into you know, mental chatter or thinking about what you're gonna have for dinner as a distraction from what you're feeling when you get on a foam roller, that's a really good indication to me that uh, one of your strategies for avoiding painful situations in life is to distract, right? Um, so you'll want to just notice what happens when you do this practice. It is a practice of being with sensation. Uh, and the greater your capacity to be with sensation of all kinds, uncomfortable and pleasant, the greater your capacity to effectively release fascia, optimize your body and move on with your life, right? And spend a minimal time here on a foam roller or releasing fascia. But if you're new to this or you're new to cultivating capacity to be with sensation or even uncomfortable emotions, because they do kind of go hand in hand, you're just starting out and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, everybody has to start somewhere and it's about building that capacity. So it's about committing to the practice. Um, once you do compression only, so, you know, you can use every technique that I have here at Mobility Mastery and instead of doing, following my instructions for movement to release fascia, you're just going to do the compression. So whatever my starting point is in the video, start there and don't move, feel. Once you feel like you've cultivated that capacity and you've built it up a little bit and you want to try something more, then you go to slow movement. If you still can't, you know, tolerate the sensations with slow movement, go back to no movement. So it's slow movement or no movement until you can be with that sensation. So you're building up capacity to be with the sensations there. Um, another thing that I definitely encourage you to do to uh, put your mind in service of this practice and really being with your body is to notice your self-talk and then engage in a different kind of self-talk. So first I would encourage you to simply notice because what you notice is going to be really good information about how you're orienting to all those sensations when you're on a foam roller. So, you know, like I said, are you avoiding 
even even being with it by thinking about dinner or you know a conversation you had yesterday or an upcoming you know deadline of yours at work um, that's distraction but you might be somebody who is actually on a foam roller and suddenly you are engaging in self-talk like oh my god what's wrong with you you can't even like get on a foam roller you know you're such a wuss so like if if that starts coming up that's a certain type of self-talk right or or maybe it's like is this safe should i even be doing this do i know what i'm doing like does alicia know what the hell she's talking about like you know so if you start kind of noticing that you're questioning the safety or validity of what's happening um, just just again just notice it the purpose of this video isn't to dive into each potential scenario and then problem solve that for you i just want you to notice what you're doing why because this is how you're orienting to pain in your life of all kinds uncomfortable sensations but probably also emotions um, so if if you're somebody who is saying you know like is this safe you probably have that same experience with emotion is it is this safe to feel what i feel um so just notice so that's why i put emotions too painful too um it might be useful to to re, you know just examine your emotion emotional life and your relationships that provoke or trigger emotion in you like how much capacity do you have for being with uncomfortable emotions uh, because in my experience they really go hand in hand your capacity to be with uncomfortable emotions is going to be the degree to which you can have capacity for being with uncomfortable physical sensations like fascia release and what's so amazing and fascinating to me about fascia release is this is a really really direct route of contacting what's living in us um, including at the nervous system level which contains a lot of uh, reactivity patterns and how we deal with hard things and potentially stuck emotions in your body uh, so it's a really direct route that avoids the mind and goes straight to the source um, so it's really useful information to find out ha what happens when you contact your body just with compression not even with the goal of doing fascia release right um, and then you can use that information to grow your capacity to evolve to change some of those patterns if you want to consciously change them. Um, and I, again, I have resources on this channel to help you do that. That's not necessarily the purpose of this video. Um, and, you know, that last bullet point, again, you just want to rule that out. So if you think you've ruled it out and you've gone through these or, you know, it, it doesn't, none of this is sitting, like you have, you know about yourself that you have a high uh, capacity for being with emotions, then I might come back to lymph toxicity and just double check yourself on that. Uh, all right. And, and I guess I want to end on, on just reiterating because I've already said it, but I want to reiterate again. This is about a practice. This is about growing your capacity. It's not about arriving at an end point. I don't know that we just arrive at capacity and then we stay there. Like, how can you keep growing it and growing it and growing it right so you can be with more in your life and thus experience more in your life and it's been my experience that the degree to which we allow ourselves to feel and experience you know so-called negative or painful emotions and sensations is the degree to which we get to experience um, freedom joy right they're opposites so they definitely mirror one another and as you grow this capacity you're gonna grow your capacity to engage with life and have more aliveness coming through you and your body all right so now i want to move on to what to do if your fascia release efforts are not working for something like you know pain relief or optimization for the sake of this video i'm going to really talk most about pain relief like problem solving an injury uh trying to get a result for, you know, a pain or a sensation that you don't like that's happening in your body, whether it's plantar fasciitis or knee pain or back pain or carpal tunnel, um, all those kinds of things. Uh, before we do that, I just want to touch on real quick this idea of optimization in case that's you. So you can kind of um, be thinking about that as I walk through these things for people who are working on a pain or injury. Um, so to me, optimization, you know, or using fascia release goes through four main phases. One, um, you know, where maybe you've, you, you know, some pain has gotten your attention. That's probably why you've turned to fascia release. Uh, 
And that first phase is going to be working through the painful um, sensations that are there, you know, living in her body and moving out the past, moving out the congested uh, and accumulated tension and emotions and physical, you know, debris or accumulation of patterns, right? That's living in her body. So you're moving out the past to make room for the present and possibility. Uh, phase number two is, hey, it actually stops hurting. Um, it doesn't hurt that bad, right? Like you notice a shift in how it feels. Uh, phase three is that you find it pleasant. Like there's actual enjoyment in the process and in the sensation and how it feels to engage with fascia release. And then you know you're at optimization when it doesn't hurt at all. Uh, and just a quick note on that, there are some people out there who don't feel much in their body. Um, and it's not because their fascia is healthy, it's because they've actually shut off their ability to feel because feeling became too painful and they banished sensation and emotion from their life uh, and have arrived at a, you know, at a point where they can get on a foam roller, it doesn't hurt. I can stand on them and it doesn't hurt because they've learned to shut off those sensations and emotions. So um, I'm not gonna dive into that. I just had to touch on it here. Uh, but like I said, I wanna talk about what to do if fascia release is not working for pain relief specifically as a starting point. Um, so if you've tried, you know, I'm gonna assume that you've tried numerous things. Hopefully you have, right? So let's say you landed on a video of mine or a blog post for plantar fasciitis and you tried that video and maybe didn't get a result or maybe you got a minor result and then your pain came back. Um, maybe you tried another, you know, video or technique of mine. Um, hopefully you've tried a few things. So as a starting place, I would just say, if you try only one thing and it doesn't work and you are like, fascia release doesn't work for me, examine that. <laughs> um, I would like to challenge you on that because, you know, this isn't a magic wand. It's not something you just do once and you get a result. And just because you went through the motions of it, you deserve the result. Um, I'm going to talk about kind of why and how, uh, how to engage with what's happening as we move through these. Um, it's, you know, like pain relief isn't, it's a little mysterious. It isn't, it isn't black and white. Um, there's a lot that goes on with pain and pain relief. So, uh, you know, find another video of mine that helps you understand pain. That's not the purpose of this video. So uh, this might come under the bullet point here of getting curious. So if, if you've been trying a lot of things and it's not working, a lot of fascia release techniques, right? Um, and it's not working. The first thing I would really have you check in on is your nervous system. Like how, you know, whether you orient to it as too painful or not, right, um, may, may or may not be part of the equation uh, here with the nervous system. So maybe it is, maybe you can tolerate the pain, but you have some kind of reactivity happening in your nervous system that isn't actually allowing uh, the fascia release to take place. This is super common in my private practice with some people. Um, it, it may mean that there's a nervous system protection mechanism that's getting triggered that's not allowing the foam roller or maybe you've taken my kinetics partner course and you're trying out, you know, stepping on each other. Um, so it's not allowing the person, their foot to come into your body. Uh, or in the case of, you know, if you go to a manual therapist, maybe their hands, like for whatever reason, there's a barrier up, there's a wall up of protection against whatever this is that's trying to help you, right? Whether it's that foam roller, a foot, someone's hand. Um, so something that's supposed to be helpful is getting assigned a meaning uh, of threat by your body. Your body says, ooh, this is threatening. I'm gonna put up protection until it's over. Whew, okay, they're gone, now I can relax. Uh, so if there's a protection mechanism happening in your nervous system, you're not really gonna get the benefits of fascia release and thus no change is really gonna take place at the physical level. Um, so I definitely examine your reactivity. Are you um, bracing against the fascia release, right? Are you like squeezing your muscles to kind of push out whatever tool is trying to come into your body, whether it's a foam roller or a lacrosse ball, someone's foot, someone's hand, are you bracing against it to protect? Are you dissociating mentally? Are you somebody who 
endures hard things and suffers in silence, but doesn't actually allow the experience to be fully processed. Because if that describes you, I relate, and you could go through a massage or a fascia release session and simply endure it and experience it as a threatening experience that must be endured and not something helpful to you. Um, so uh, that's another way it can manifest. And we could spend all day talking about the nervous system and the many ways the nervous system engages protection. That's not totally the point of this video, um, but you're gonna notice it based on, again, it's just this word reactivity. So. Are you yelping? Are you screaming? Are you unable to be present for and actually feel and be with the sensations? If that describes you, you need to come over to this column um, and, and do this work first as a means of cultivating the capacity to be with the uncomfortable sensations of fascia release. Um, however, there could be something else going on. Um, so I want you to check your beliefs. Now, they may be currently existing below the level of your conscious awareness, so I just want to point that out, but they might not be. They might be conscious. Uh, for example, I have had many people walk into my office over the last 12 years since I've been in practice um, since 2008, so I've had the chance to work with a lot of different types of people. And there is a certain type of person that will walk in my office, say almost the exact words verbatim to each other, and they get the exact same result. And the words that they'll use are something to the effect of, like, you're my last stop. Uh, I'm somewhat open-minded, but I just want you to know I'm really skeptical. So I want you to prove that this works uh, because, like, you're, you're my last hope. Like, this is all, like, this is it. Um, those people rarely get a result with me, like almost never. Uh, so if you have a belief that, um, I don't know, you're permanently defective or right. Like why does someone have skepticism of a potential method that could help them? Now I'm not saying like, there's a real, real difference between healthy skepticism and protective skepticism that isn't allowing you to actually uh, do things that could help you. Um, so just check in with that. Another example would be, do you believe fascia release can help you? It could be as simple as that, right? And there's this whole, you know, there's the whole placebo, nocebo thing, but it's worth examining whether you've noceboed yourself in regards to fascia release or placeboed yourself, right? Like if you don't believe it's going to work, if you're approaching this with kind of like, well, this is my last you know, hurrah, this is the last thing I'm gonna try. Um, this crazy girl, Alicia, says it's gonna work, but I'm not so sure, but I'll, you know, test it by getting on a foam roller. Um, and no, no judgment from me on this, honestly. Like, I know that those protective mechanisms are there for a reason. Um, you could be mitigating disappointment. So if you are somebody who finds disappointment to be one of the most painful experiences in life, then you will, likely avoid scenarios in which you could feel disappointed, right? So if you are coming into my office, for example, or approaching a self fascia release session as somebody who wants to avoid disappointment, whew, this is a, that's like a tough one, right? Like how do you avoid, like it might not work. Fascia release isn't the answer for every pain, right? So if you are avoiding the potential disappointment, right? We don't even know if you are gonna get disappointed yet, but if you're already coming to fascia release, you know, avoiding the scenario of disappointment, then it's basically a self-sabotaging scenario where you've already disappointed yourself right from the get-go, right? Like you, um, you've decided it might not work already, Thus, you're not open-minded. Thus, you may not get a result. Thus, you've protected yourself from the disappointment of it not working, but meanwhile, you didn't give yourself a shot at it actually working. So there are many ways our beliefs can impact us. So just check your beliefs around your body, around what you deserve, around pain itself, around, you know, fascia release, um, and then get curious. 
Curiosity is a superpower. If you're able to cultivate a lot of curiosity about what's happening in your body, you're gonna get out of pain and you're gonna figure this out. So with that curiosity, I want you to look for the root cause. And it may be purely physical, plantar fasciitis, for example. Um, it may be partly physical and partly emotional. Maybe there's something else going on in your life and your body is getting your attention. Pain is a signal of threat or danger, but it can get triggered from emotional threat or danger that you know we interpret our, something in our life as an emotional threat or emotional danger, or it could be physical or it could be both. Um, it could be somewhat psycho-spiritual, like maybe you're in the wrong career, your life has no meaning, uh, and you're not doing anything about it. Your body might be getting your attention so, with pain, with physical pain, right? This happens. Um, so I put integrity here last because it's definitely something I want you to check in with. Uh, it's been my experience that people who are in, in integrity with themselves to a large degree, I'm not talking perfection, but to a large degree, they are in the right career for them. They are in the right relationship for them. They are somebody who honors their needs and their feelings. And there are no big like, you know, secrets being held in their body. There's not something they're, they're ignoring that is, you know, due to ignoring it, their life is not the way uh, their higher self believes it should be. If that describes you, like if there's something in your life right now really trying to get your attention, like it could be your relationship. Like I am thinking of a certain client of mine right now who had a lot going on physically and there was stuff with his relationships that we talked about where he wasn't speaking up. He wasn't asking for his needs to be met. He was so scared of, you know, the, the potential relationship rupture, like a, a divorce or a separation, if he were to dare to ask for his needs to be met, that he wasn't speaking up. And um, this is something that happens all the time. I have had this happen in my life. So when I don't speak up about my needs and make sure that I'm being my authentic self in my relationships and in my life, my body gets my attention. So how, you know, if you've ruled out something in the nervous system, when you've ruled out your, you know, some limiting belief or a belief that's hanging out in your subconscious that might be sabotaging your efforts, if you've ruled out, you know, a physical cause, um, or you've completely ruled out an emotional cause, um, just look at this word integrity and figure out what it means for you. And those three main categories for me are your relationships. So, you know, connection and everything that goes with that in terms of emotional health and feeling connected to the people in your life and feeling authentic in your relationships. There's, you know, your relationship with purpose, with meaning, with your work. Uh, and then there's, of course, your relationship to yourself and your body. And you could be out of integrity in one or more of those areas and your body is trying to get your attention. So, the, this would be like the main, these are the main things I would have you work through before giving up. Not that I ever, ever, ever want you to give up. Don't ever give up. <laughs> um, commit. So maybe I should have put the last one there. Commit. Like pain doesn't just happen. It's not, I don't believe it's random. I don't believe it just happens and there's nothing you can do about it or that we're supposed to, you know, cut it out of the body, surgically remove it, numb all our sensations and never feel pain. That's not my orientation. And if it's yours, you're in the wrong place because I don't have answers for you. Um, so these are amazing places to go to look at why your fascia release isn't working. Um, and I'll just say that I'm 12 years in here of this career with fascia release and pain and the nervous system. And I'm simply amazed at nature's checks and balances. Like I'm in awe of it. What I mean by that is our, our physical selves, our physical body literally won't allow us to move on from something we're ignoring that is integral to our integrity. You're, so it, it's just, it's shown up over and over and over. We'll get thrown back on ourselves until we face whatever that is, until we evolve it, heal it, process it, metabolize it, integrate it and move forward. Uh, so, you know, again, I don't know what it is. It could be a belief, a nervous system pattern, 
you haven't found the root cause, and then I would definitely look at integrity to help you find the root cause. Um, and if none of that works, I'm not sure what to tell you at this point because I don't have you in front of me, but I wouldn't advise you to give up. There's always an answer. There's only so much we can do by ourselves. So I guess I would say as a final uh, kind of prompt here or something you could do is to get help for either of these, right? Like sometimes it's really hard to see ourselves. Not sometimes, all the time, right? Sometimes it's, it's easier and better to work with somebody else who can act like a mirror for us. So whether that's going to, um, like maybe you need to work with someone who isn't a body worker. Maybe it's actually more in the realm of psycho-spiritual or emotional health, uh, but maybe it is somebody who does work with fascia or the nervous system. You can seek health, uh, health. You can seek health, yes. You can seek help and get mirrored to you what's happening so that someone else is kind of holding you accountable and holding you in possibility and looking at it with you with a more objective lens. So there you go. Um, that is what to do if fascia release is too painful or not working. And just remember if you're in this category that it could actually be that it's too painful and you haven't allowed yourself to admit that. And you may need to come over here and cultivate this you know, before moving through the rest of these. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was really useful. Um, I felt excited to create this for you because I know it's gonna help you problem solve whatever's going on in your fascia release efforts at home. So I hope you comment below this video with your favorite takeaway, one takeaway from this video. If you would do that, I would love to hear from you. Your comments are the fuel that really keep me going here on YouTube. So please share your thoughts below. Um, if you haven't yet downloaded my beginner's guide to fascia release, then I would encourage you to do that because it's gonna help you with all of this for sure. Uh, so it's just a PDF download that's got some bullet points about how to master the basics of fascia release. And then we have links that actually go to my top techniques that I encourage you to master as the basics from head to toe. Um, so they're all in one place for you, super easy to navigate, much better than just the YouTube channel or the blog. So if you haven't gotten that yet, we'll link to it below. You can go grab that right now. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.